Hey guys, what is up? John here from FlyMikeAlpha.com coming at you today to talk about drones and specifically, where can you fly these little guys? More importantly, can you fly them near an airport? And what are the rules about flying near airports with your drone, SUAS, whatever you wish to call these fancy new little fun devices? So, drones, the evil little creatures Jeff Bezos dreamed up that haunt us as pilots, right? What are the rules regarding drones? Because they change all the time as we continuously hear. So, this video is not going to be opinion-based. It's going to be purely fact-based and deal only with the facts surrounding drones. The comment section is placed below conveniently for your opinions regarding drones. We're not going to deal with any opinions today, just the facts. You can go ahead and troll each other all you want below in the comment section. So, myth one, the rules change all the time. No, they don't. They've been the same since roughly 2016. That's when AC 107-2 was issued along with part 107, 14 CFR 107. So title 14 of the Code of Federal Regulations, part 107, just like we have part 61, part 91 with general aviation stuff. So 107 is a pretty short read. It's only, you know, 10, 12 pages or so. You could blow through it pretty quickly. And those are all the regulations about aircraft, or SUAS aircraft, we should specify. Drones. AC 107-2, a little bit longer read, about 50 some pages, that details basically all of part 107 and explains it in relatively plain, clear English. Now for the benefit of the pilots here flying fixed wing aircraft or helicopters, and the benefit of drone pilots out there, what do you legally have to do to operate near an airport? So we're gonna deal with within five miles of an airport, what do we have to do? Well. Just from a legal standpoint here, okay, so this is so the pilots out there of helicopters and fixed wing aircraft don't freak out when they see drones at airports because guess what, they can legally operate at an airport, let alone near it. So within five miles of an airport or physically on the airport, what do you have to do to legally operate there? Well, if it's over half a pound or 0.55 pounds, register it. So I got a little registration number on mine. And obviously this one's a little bit on the heavy side. I've got plenty of drones here that are light, of toys and they're not registered because they're not legally required to be even these little fun things here that just kind of hover and they're so tiny and cute oh, crashed it again oh well so once it's registered and you want to operate say in class g airspace so quick airspace review here here's what class g airspace looks like class g airspace exists everywhere from the surface up to 1200 feet agl like around venice here except we see this little magenta ring around the venice airport which means from zero to 700 feet within this ring is where class g airspace exists above that it is class echo we'll stay out of echo for now just in class g airspace we're dealing with let's look at the bend airport out in bend oregon other side of the country right so we'll get two points of the country it's kind of fun so two sides of the country let's look at bend here same deal right class g airspace at the surface going up so if we're not in Echo, Delta, Bravo, or Charlie airspace, we're in Class G airspace, which is known as uncontrolled airspace. Thus, let me direct you to 5.8.1 of Advisory Circular 107-2, Unless the flight is conducted within controlled airspace, no notification or authorization is required or necessary to operate at or near an airport. So, there's no authorization or notification required according to AC 107-2. Now, typically I still say pick up the phone, call the airport manager, let them know half hour, hour in advance. Voicemail is fine if you don't get them. Email is okay. You just have to make a general effort to notify airports within five nautical miles of where you're going to be operating your drone. Part 107, this is assuming you're operating under Part 107, not as a hobbyist, eliminates the requirement to file a notum. You still can call flight service and file a notum saying I'm going to be flying my drone at or near the airport, but they will often tell you, hey, you don't have to do that anymore, and no, we don't really want to do it. So the notum thing's kind of out as well. Do you have to have a handheld radio when you're flying your drone at or near an airport? No. Can you fly a drone on the ramp? Can you fly a drone in the taxiway? Can you fly over the runway? Sure you can, as long as you don't interfere with other aircraft. What's interfering with other aircraft? Well, if you're flying over the runway and somebody's on short final and they go around because they see a drone over the runway, you're interfering with their normal flight. So don't do that. Just stay away when there's aircraft around. If you're flying over a taxiway and you happen to pass over top of another aircraft by 20 or 30 feet and they never even see you, you know, or you're just kind of following an aircraft or something like that, you're probably not interfering with them because you're just kind of hovering similar to a helicopter, how they would. So what else do we have to do to operate in class G airspace at an airport? Absolutely nothing. That is it. We've established the bare minimums. Those are the legal requirements. 
zero to 400 feet AGL or within 400 feet of an obstacle. So say you've got, you know, a little uh, tower sticking up somewhere and you can actually fly your drone within 400 feet of it and for up to 400 feet above it even. So that's when you're flying fixed wing aircraft or helicopters, stay away from obstacles, get it 500 feet or a thousand above the highest obstacle. That way you won't run into a drone that's legally operating, maybe observing a cell phone tower. So you could even easily have a cell phone tower a thousand feet tall and have a drone flying up at a thousand feet AGL as long as it's very close to that cell phone tower. Now, typically we don't fly our airplanes or helicopters that close to cell phone towers for good reason. So we should avoid the drones that are operating like that. Now. Next rules, can they fly at night? Well, with waivers, they certainly can. They have to have the bright little lights on the drones. And even these lights that are on this one may not qualify for being bright enough, but these lights will probably get you uh, by for the civil twilight requirement. So they can operate about 30 minutes after sunset or 30 minutes prior to sunrise with these little navigation lights on the arms here. So as long as they have those lights, they can operate after sunset. But if they don't have the lights, Sunset's the latest the drones are going to operate. Just remember, no notum is required and they can fly at airports, so we do have to watch out for them as pilots. Now you may say this is incredibly dangerous and should be stopped immediately, this is terrible. I just want to remind you guys here, just for a moment before we talk about the class B, C, and D, and E airspace. When airplanes were first invented, prior to airplanes there were balloons, hot air balloons, and they started out in France or something a long time ago. Uh, they would fly their hot air balloons and drink wine. That's what they did. And as they were flying around drinking their wine, they noticed people started flying airplanes. And they went, oh God, those airplanes, they're crazy. Look at them moving around and crashing and doing crazy stuff. Oh my gosh, they could hit us and kill us. We can't get out of their way. And I'm sure the balloon pilots were terribly dissatisfied that airplanes were now taking the sky, the sky that they owned. But then time went on and the balloons and the airplanes got along with each other everything worked out just fine. And then as time progressed, somewhere along the line, gliders began to fly, and maybe not recreationally at first, but later on, gliders began to fly recreationally, and then the airplane pilots were so annoyed that the gliders were flying, and they had to watch out for them, and the airplanes had to give way to the gliders, but they were in the sky first, really, and that's just not fair. There was more airplanes before there were recreational glider pilots, and then they all got along just fine and well as time went on and now they all coexist wonderfully. And then the helicopters came and the helicopters almost ended general aviation as we know it. They almost dis destroyed all of aviation. But then the helicopters and the airplanes and the balloons and the gliders all got along just fine with each other and everything was okay. And then you won't believe this, what happened next. But people began, for fun, jumping out of perfectly good airplanes for no reason at all. The airplane wasn't on fire, there was no smell of smoke, they just jumped out with a parachute on their back, this little tiny pack, and pulled a cord and fell to the Earth's surface, and they called that fun. And they're known as skydivers, and they are the bane of all pilots' existence, except for airports like Zephyr Hills, Florida, where the skydivers and the gliders and the fixed-wing airplane pilots and the helicopters all get along and coexist in beautiful harmony. And even on the busiest of days, Saturdays and Sunday mornings, it all goes just fine and they get along with each other and they don't hit each other and it's totally okay. So for all the guys that freak out about drones are going to hit airplanes and they just don't belong in the national airspace system, it's an aircraft. It's actually an opportunity to get thousands if not millions of youth involved in aviation because I can buy this thing for about $1,500 or $2,000. I can buy this thing for 20 bucks. I can buy this thing for like 50 bucks and I can fly it and I can get into aviation flying objects as a kid and that can translate into more pilots in general aviation for all of us. Over a million drones registered and this thing's not registered because it's too light. There's tens of millions of these things floating around but over a million of these are registered in the United States. There's about 200 some thousand actual aircraft gliders and fixed wing aircraft and helicopters registered in the United States. Far more drones are out there. And that's a great thing for us as general aviation pilots, we should embrace it as an opportunity to get so many more people into our sport, into our hobby and share aviation with them and share the sky with them. So there's a way to do that safely and nicely. It's just follow the rules that already exist and the rules don't change. Now let's quickly talk about, I wanna go fly in the surface Bravo airspace around Tampa, Florida. How could I possibly do that and do it safely? Well, guess what? 
much like uh, the old Apple commercial said, I think that was Apple, there's an app for that. And I'll go ahead and pull up this app for you. And here on this little app called AirMap, it will actually let you go ahead and notify ATC that you're going to be flying your drone. And so if I wanna go ahead and just zoom out here, I can say, hey look, I'm right near Sarasota. And Sarasota is Surface Class Charlie airspace. So I have to notify them that I'm gonna be operating in the Surface Class Charlie, or maybe that's Surface Class Echo that extends out, but it's really kind of out there, so it's not a big deal. So what do I do? Well, I just kind of zoom in here, and I say, oh, I wanna operate near downtown Sarasota and get some awesome shots of the marina. And what does it tell me? Well, it says right there that, okay, as long as you're operating 200 feet AGL and below, you're good to go. You just have to tap on here, tap the screen, and then it kind of gives you that little quadrant. It says, warning, class C airspace. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on it, so I'm gonna be operating a radius of, oh, 800 feet, not very big, under 107 with the required rules, all great, and then next, and it fills out all my information, puts all my information in there, I tell it how long I'll be operating for, maybe an hour and a half, I don't have that many batteries anyways. Altitude, oh, we'll call it 150 feet, and we just go ahead and simply complete this little application here. We hit next, and we're gonna say, of course, not starts now. We're gonna to wanna to start this later on during daylight hours so we don't freak it out. And hit next, creating flight plan. And then guess what? It actually pings the FAA and gives us instant authorization. So now we have successfully created our flight. We'll wait and we're going to get a text on our cell phone really quickly here that's going to tell us, and hey, look, we have a text response here that we are authorized to go ahead and fly in controlled airspace, and this is our notification to ATC. This counts as calling ATC and getting authorization from them. Now, do you have to do anything else? No, you could go ahead and notify the airport manager, but it's really kind of pointless because they can't say no anyways. And what do they really care when you're operating that far from the airport? It is a nice thing to do. It's kind of a leftover rule from before when we were kind of in limbo of making up all these rules. Now, a couple quick myths just to recap them, right? You don't need a radio to operate at an airport or near an airport. You don't need to have a yellow safety vest on, even though I've been told from the FAA because people do complain about me operating my drone at airports that I should just get a yellow safety vest made up that says FAA drone pilot on the back. They think that would kind of solve a lot of the problems and just kind of make people think I'm more official somehow. You don't need to file a notum. You don't need to let other pilots know. You don't need to let the flight school know. All those things can be good ideas, can be done, but the bare minimum set forth from the FAA is the law, and we all need to follow the law and respect the law, respect the rules that were set forth. Now, if time permits, and you happen to know the local area, and you can let the local operators know that you're going to be there, great. If you're visiting an area, and you really don't know who the FBO is, who the flight school is, if there's even one on the field, if there's a flying club, or whatever's going on there, then stick to the federal laws, and you'll be in good shape. Now, you can say, these are terribly dangerous, and they must be stopped now. I'm sure somebody's writing that in the comment section right as I say that. I'm guaranteed they're writing that. Well, here's the deal, guys. We lose almost 20 pilots a year due to airplanes hitting other airplanes in flight, unfortunately. So manned aircraft hitting manned aircraft is killing people every year and has been for a very long time. We lose even more people. We have even more accidents than that due to birds and other objects, other wildlife hitting aircraft. Now, no one controls the birds, even though I swear to God, when I fly, it's like that seagull is like, hey, dude, you killed Bill last week. I saw you hit him with your wing. I'm coming through your windscreen today. You better watch out. These things like attack Cessnas, I swear. Um, they attack Cessnas more than they attack French fries on the beach. Either way, birds and wildlife pose a much greater threat than drones do. A drone is controlled by a human being somewhere. They have a vested interest in it not hitting your aircraft. It's expensive. This costs me a lot of money. I don't want to see it get broken. I don't want all the liability attached to this going through your windscreen. I'm going to go to great lengths to make sure that doesn't happen. Plus, I have all these handy rules that are very clearly spelled out by the FAA that I'm following to make sure that this stays away from your airplane. If airplane pilots and helicopter pilots and all other pilots follow all those rules that they're supposed to under 6191, 135, 121, and so on, then all the drone guys flying under 107 will follow their rules and will exist in happy harmony, just like the balloons, the gliders, the helicopters, the airplanes, and even those crazy people jumping out of airplanes with parachutes on their back. It's really not crazy, guys. If you have any questions, actual questions, not you know just rants about part 107, but actual real questions, go ahead and shoot them to us at CFI at flyatmikealpha.com. 
or better yet, post them up on the website at flyatmikealf.com. One of our CFIs will respond to it for everyone else to see to answer that question. If you just want to rant and troll everyone on YouTube, then feel free. I mean, we can't stop you, so that's what the comment section is for below there. Go ahead and give it a shot. Either way, guys, I hope this was informative. I hope you at least, if you were to take anything away from this, it's that drones can totally, legally, absolutely operate at airports, and there's nothing anyone can do to really stop them. It is legally allowed by the federal laws. You can't make up a rule that prevents it. Any federal airport that takes federal funding has to allow all aeronautical activities without discrimination, including skydiving, including gliders, including drones, unless there is some serious safety hazard associated with it. And no one's proven yet that these are seriously a safety hazard. Obviously, there's bad actors that could use these to damage aircraft, but there's bad actors, you know, with green laser pointers and shotguns at the end of runways too. So, Either way, guys, these really aren't that bad. They're actually a really good thing for general aviation. Try to see the good in these. There's a ton of wonderful things that can come of this. And either way, guess what? As pilots, we're the minority. These are coming. There's nothing we can do to stop it. There are billions and billions of dollars behind these. Way more money than there is behind general aviation. It's going to happen anyways. Might as well just, you know, put a smile on your face and accept it. So, again, any questions, guys, whatever we can do to help you out with your drone questions, post them up at flyatmikealf.com under the ask question tab. You guys know what to do. Give us a thumbs up on the video if you like it. If you don't like drones, don't give us a thumbs down on the video. I mean, come on, that's a drone. You should thumbs down the drone, not the video. Give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. And go ahead and hit that little bell thing there. You'll get notified when we post our latest episodes about more drone tips and of course, a lot more flight training tips for you out there. If you can't fly every day, fly8mikealpha.com. We'll see y'all next time.